Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. Now, a lot of you guys are not asking me this question. Is Dona good at R6 or not? Is he worth it? Is he not worth it? What is the status quo for Dona? Is he viable? Will he be buffed? So this will be the final showcase for Dona. I don't feel like he excels in any other areas except for PvP. And whether or not he does well in today's video is entirely up to fate. I cannot say for sure if I know that he's going to be good or not. Although I have tested him out a couple of times and yes, I did win all of those fights. But is it really because of Dona? So let's check it out. Now here's the build that I'm going to be using on him. It's the basic Nether Avatar set. This is like the perfect set for all bruiser de uh, bruiser defenders or bruiser attackers right so height for example nether avatar also a very big hit so in terms of stats i'm just loading him with a lot of defense and the rest goes into a full crit rate and as much crit damage as i can master and right now his crit damage and his defense are actually pretty pretty good so i do hope to see some decent dps coming from his skills and in terms of his skills let's take a look at his skills real quick attacks one enemy damage 30 percent of, of its attack plus 50 percent of defense with a 50% chance goes up to 75% chance of inflicting attack down for 2 turns. I don't even see the point of this. Now, second skill is his passive, Thundercrack. Gains Conductor for 1 turn at the end of Dona's turn. While Conductor is active, attacks all enemies at the start of his turn, which is 90% of his defense goes up to 110%. And if any ability triggers a crit, any ability, even his first, his second skill as well, or his third skill, Thundercrack's cooldown is actually reduced by one turn. That's why you need him to be on the Avatar set. It's very important that he counterattacks so that he reduces the cooldown of this skill itself. And finally, we have the third skill, Explosions in the Sky. Attacks one enemy, damages 80% of attack plus 100% of his defense, and gains defense up and immunity for two turns. Now, resets the cooldown on Thundercrack and gains two Thunder Blessing stacks afterwards. And finally, he has a Captain ability of 30% defense, Universal. Now, very quickly, let's go through his Ascension. So he has 10% HP, completely garbage, 15 resist which is not bad 20% defense which i think is okay and in terms of his resonances r1 thundercrack his passive final damage increases by 10% r2 new effect thundercrack passive when thunder blessing reaches max stacks gains one turn instantly so the moment he has five thunder blessing stacks he will instantly take a turn land his nuke on his second skill basically his passive and now his r4 when target defense below donor damage increases by 15% and R6, Explosions in the Sky, resets the cooldown for Thundercrack passive, gains two Thunder Blessing stacks afterwards. Alright, so now let's take a look at Point War, and we are going to try to fight against every single different kind of comp. So if you're up against a Feng Lucy comp, unfortunately, we have no choice here. Okay, so uh, to support Dona in this case, we are going to bring certain aspects that I think will work well with him. So the first aspect I think is going to be Abigail. The reason being, she's going to instantly give him a turn at the start. He's going to use his third skill, get himself immune give himself the defense buff and of course apply conductor on himself as well so that this preps his dps at the start now aside from abigail i think a very important aspect to bring is uh, jin yao any kind of jin yao any resonance is going to be uh, very helpful because this protects him from all kinds of stuns and all that although one would argue that maybe a gabriel is better suited for this case but the thing is what if he's stunned gabriel is not going to be able to take him out of the stun I mean, yes, we can use Clara, but Clara will not provide the immunity afterwards. So I think maybe Jin Yao is probably going to be a, a little bit better in general. And of course, we're going to bring Everett for more damage mitigation. That's going to protect Dona a little bit more. And of course, assist us with more DPS at the same time. And then finally, I think we're going to bring in an Ahmed for some really good healing. Now, the thing about Ahmed's healing is it heals based on Ahmed's own max HP. So that means that Dona with very little HP and very high defense is actually going to do very well with Ahmed's impressive healing. So Ahmed's actually going to heal him for a quite a good amount. And then we, of course, we're going to run Dona as the defense lead for more defense and so that Abigail's AI is just going to target Dona instantly. Okay, so anyway, let's take a look at this enemy's defense here. Let's see how we perform. So they are obviously going to start first. They have everything. They're going to reset our cooldowns and all that kind of good stuff. But hopefully because of Ahmed, we can heal with Ahmed and reduce the cooldowns of our team again, which means we probably should be able to get our skills up uh, once again. Okay, so we, we managed to tank through everything. So, okay, we got our cooldowns reset like crazy. So, uh, Abigail, <laughs> kind of cringe here against uh, the Nusi. And we have not lost anything just yet, which is great. So now Ahmed is actually going to heal us up. Which means uh, Abigail is actually going to get her third skill ready right now. Like her, her skill cooldowns are all... Yep, her skill cooldowns are all ready right now. Okay, nice counter attack. Nice counter attack. And we kill the Unas, right? We did not kill the Unas. Wow, 6,000 damage. Big DPS from Dona. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Okay, thankfully the defense breaks are just going into Jin Yu Yao. Not that it really matters, but it's good that it's not going onto my Dona at least. That's that's what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, so even though my Abby girl has her third skill up, she's not even able to use it because she got stunned. Ouch. Come on, Dona. This is your chat. Oh my god, his third skill was on cooldown. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, now Dona needs to get hit a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So that he can instantly gain a new turn. Okay, so now Abigail use it on Junior because Junior's HP is low. So yeah, rip. Oh, wow. <laughs> the buff strip and the stun prop from the Tyranny Feng Nusi. Okay, so clearly Nusi is just too much for us to handle right now. Yeah, there is like absolutely no way. Oh my god. We are going to get clipped so high. Actually, maybe not true. If Abigail gets her turn and she gets her third skill up again, uh, we might be able to revive Dona and Dona might be able to do something, right? But uh, clearly, we don't really need Dona in this case because Everett OP. Oh, wait, wait, wait. here we go, here we go, here we go. <sighs> are you kidding me? Okay, we won just because of Everett. Like, Everett is just insane. And this is part of the reason why I need Everett over here <laughs> to ensure that we get some consistent wins at least. Now let's take a look at damage spread. Oh my god, Dona, big DPS. Big support over there. Nice one, Dona. All right, next fight here, we have another speed cleave comp. So let's actually just quick battle this. Let's just see the outcome real quick. Is Dona even doing anything in this fight? He is doing something in this fight. Okay, let's take a look at what he's doing in this fight. Okay, so they push our AP up. They do not have a Feng Nu C, which is a great thing. So maybe that's the reason why. So we're able to just unleash our combo, right? So Abigail is going to move first, going to push. No. Abigail is not going to buff. Abigail is going to buff herself. Never mind, she's taunted. Okay, Dona is a little bit too slow. I think that's the issue here, right? Okay, Dona got a defense break. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. How did we even win? Nice counter attack into a kill, which did 7,000 damage. Wow. I mean, honestly, I, I did give Dona a lot of stats. A lot of crit damage, a lot of attack power, a lot of stuff. Okay, finally, now we are just in our conductor phase right now. And we should be able to land some AoEs, I think. So that's the reason why I built Dona very slow. Because I feel like he don't need all that speed if he's just going to use... You see that? He's going to instantly gain a turn, regardless of whether he has high speed or not. As long as he gets 5 stacks. Uh, it's part of the reason why I want to use Abigail with him so that he gains the turn at the start. That's all I really care about. That rotation is very important. Okay, so the rest is like extremely boring. We just won because we, yeah, we, we got rid of their main DPS. That's about it. Okay, what's this fight? Okay, now we are finally up against a tanky comp. So can we hold the ground against a tanky comp like this? Let's quick battle. Is Dona better than a hide? <laughs> Essentially. Okay, we won. Nice. Wow, Dona did a lot of damage. Okay, okay, okay. This is interesting. Now this is the exciting stuff. Okay, we push our AP at the start. This is what I wanted to see, right? We instantly gain the immunity. We instantly gain a defense buff. And we, get, we go straight into our conductor phase. Nice! Dona gains a new turn instantly. Boom! 67k, I guess. <laughs> now, there is a huge issue with his synergy, his internal synergy. I'm talking about Dona here. So, his R6, when he used his third skill, that will reset the cooldown of his second skill. That is uh, supposedly a good thing. But the problem is, at the start of combat, your skills are all not on cooldown. Your skills are all ready. So if you use your third skill, you are just going to reset nothing. You're not going to reset any cooldowns because your second skill is already ready. That's what I'm trying to say here. So some of you guys might say, okay, what about if he gets hit by Feng Nu Si, right? Yeah, if you get hit by Feng Nu Si, you don't even have your third skill anyway. So then what's the point? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> there's some internal synergy issues, I think. Yeah, it, it's, it's just something to take, uh, to take note of. I would actually prefer it if using his second skill resets his third skill. That would make a lot more sense. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense for his rotation as well. So I think the reason why Dona is doing so much damage is just because he's just using all his AoE attacks and no one is actually controlling him. I think, I think that's what's happening here. Nice. Dona steals the turn. And he does not use his second skill again because his skill cooldowns are not up. Uh, partly because I haven't given him full skill, uh, full skill ups. I think that's probably the reason why. Okay, Dona, is he going to use his second skill? Okay, okay, I see. So the thing is, if I had maxed out his second skill, he will have a really, really good rotation on his conductor. Honestly speaking, yes, he's going to benefit a lot from the full skill up, which I have discussed like one year ago. But am I really going to skill him up just so that he has a better rotation on his second skill? I probably don't think so because uh, he's really not pushing all that much. Like in terms of his DPS, it's not crazy. Like he is built as a, as a full DPS and he is not doing a significant amount of damage at all. 73,000, it's... Yeah, 38,000, it's like... It's like really what's the point, right? I mean, 
I think it would, it would make a lot more sense to just invest into a genie. She's gonna do so much more damage anyway. And genie has like self heals and all that, and it doesn't matter whether she's stunned. A lot of good stuff on genie's kit. Or maybe just build a height, right? All right, Dona is gonna use his second skill. 93,000! Oh, wow. That is actually not bad. 93,000 on four enemies. For a defensive Esper. I think that's pretty good, actually. Essentially, it's just his second skill that needs to be maxed, nothing else. Like his third skill, you might want to do it if you really want that extra defense buff rotation, but I don't think it's really that necessary. Or maybe like the extra immunity, right? But I don't think it really matters all that much. So I think it's just his second skill. But if he's not targeted, then I think he's going to perform pretty decently at least. This would be it for the R6 Dona showcase for the time being at least. I feel like his damage output is not good enough to justify using him, partly because he's also a flow type. So most of the enemies that you see in tanky teams, for example, they are mostly going to be tanky wind espers. So over here, right, for example, we have Ahmed, we have Tricky, we have Meredith as well. These are all very common wind type espers. Of course, on top of that, we have other different kinds of wind type espers. Like, for example, if you're up against a Gabriel as well, another very OP, very meta wind type esper. So he's not going to shine as much against these comps, which is a very big reason why I don't see Dona being that useful anymore. Oh, and Hyde as well. So Hyde as a defense, he's definitely going to be a very heavy counter against Dona. So, so at that stage, it really comes to the point of like, why not just use a Hyde instead? All right, anyway, that's it. That's the end of this R6 showcase. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. How do you feel about Dona R6 right now? Do you think he's worth it? Do you think I'm actually underselling him? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Anyway, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Now, before we end of this video, I'm just going to quickly speed run seven different runs just to see uh, the final stats of all of our runs, like just his DPS and all that. Okay, we actually won this. Pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, Dona doing okay. Everett still in the lead. What about this? Up against a JJ comp. A very tanky JJ comp with a Gabriel as well. And a Tricky. And we still win even though they had a Tricky. Okay, Dona is not really pushing all that much. I think Jinyu Yao is probably like the main carry in just returning debuffs, right? So dealing all the good damage as well. Up against a Genie here. What's gonna happen? We win. We win. And what's the DPS from Dona? Is actually... Wow, okay. So it's really depending on whether Dona gets hit, I think. If Dona gets prioritized, we are, we are screwed. Okay, in this comp, we are sure to lose, man. 100%. We... <laughs> we still won. We still won. Um, yeah, Jinya hard carry over here, obviously. Dona not doing too much. I feel like he is probably stun locked for the most part. Up against a mixed Gaius comp. Very common nowadays. For some reason, I'm seeing more Gaius, Abigail, uh, tanky mixed hybrid comps. And uh, yeah, Dona is pushing a lot here. Nice to see. And uh, one more. Ga see, another mixed Gaius comp, right? So, okay, we lost. And our last entry for the day, we're up against a Laura defensive comp. We lost as well. Okay, interesting stuff. So, wow, Dona is also pushing a lot of DPS in this fight. But yeah, we still lost. All right, so that's the end of this video.